Let's uh, let's move to the Friday games. We've got four more to pick. St. Peter's against Purdue. The Peacocks are, of course, the Cinderella of the tournament. And Purdue is a 12-and-a-half-point favorite here. Now, this is a team in St. Peter's. Number. Oh, it's huge. That's it's huge. Um, but if you had told me a month ago that these two teams were playing, I probably would have taken Purdue minus like 20. So, I mean, that's a, that's what it looked like in early February. Uh, but now, of course, 12-and-a-half. The total is 133-and-a-half. I'm going to roll St. Peter's just because of the way that they have been playing, not just in the NCAA tournament, but leading up to the tournament. To get through uh, their conference tournament, they played insanely well. I I really feel like they can keep this thing relatively close if they can play a little bit of defense on Purdue. If Purdue shots are not falling, then they are in serious trouble. But I, I, I like St. Peter's. I still think there's no way that Purdue loses this game. But... <laughs> and we have lost Chris. I don't know what happened. Let's try him back. Let's try him back. Um, but yes, I I hey. like. All right, there we go. We got you back. Yeah, all the right. other call was still going. Like I don't. That's weird. That is strange. It said call failed. I don't know. <laughs> well, you, Either you way, beat in on me. So I I like. So I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I like here. Yeah, go ahead. I like St. Peter's. I think if you're if you're Dan Wessel has the best take on Purdue whatsoever. Uh, if you're from Lafayette, he, he refuses to say that they're from West Lafayette because Lafayette's not big enough to, to have a West Lafayette. Um, it, it, it's one of my favorite takes he has. Uh, if you're from the Purdue area, you're a Purdue fan, that's great. That's fine. Outside of that, if you're willing to lay 12 points against the darlings of the tournament, I don't, I, I don't want to associate with you. We can't be friends. All right, this is that is a character flaw that I don't want to have anything to do with. All right, like you don't have to believe that the Cinderella can win it all. You don't have to believe that they can even win this game. But to think that Cinderella gets here and gets their ass whipped, I can't abide by that. Okay, and so it might happen. I might lose this bet. It'll be one of many bets I've lost in my life. But I, I just there's no way on earth I would ever own a ticket at Purdue minus twelve and a half. It's just just not in me to that. It's just not. I can I can understand that. I, can I wouldn't want to be in the room with somebody who owned that. Thing. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna need some papers. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna be the Gestapo here. I'm gonna need to see a diploma or a check where you paid for somebody's diploma from the University of Purdue. I'm gonna need to see like like the the the, the whatever the the ancestry.com of you being related to Buzz Austin, right? Like, I'm going to need to see some information here for, for why you're picking this pick. Uh, Matt jumped in on the YouTube chat. He said, that's all there is in Lafayette. He said, basketball and corn. Like, <laughs> Well, yeah, but it's not big enough to have a West Lafayette. That's the, Agreed. That's the whole stick. Agreed. Uh, I, I do like the over 133 and a half. I do think that Purdue cannot play defense, and they can light it up. I think Jaden Ivey is going to be awesome. Um, this is going to be a fun game to watch. Yeah, if if St. Peter's can fill the bucket, if St. Peter's can score, we're going to get a fun basketball game because you're going to have two teams that can score. One is a, was an absolute Cinderella darling, and and so that that'll make this game fun for the visual. I think so as well. Uh, I do like St. Peter's plus the twelve and a half, and I'm going to take the over on that. Now, Providence against Kansas. Kansas, a seven and a half point favorite, total of 141 and a half. The metrics hate Providence for the most part. They have all season. This is, according to Ken Palm and according to uh, Evan Maya and a bunch of other analytic guys, Providence is the luckiest team in this tournament. And it's not close because they have had so many close wins all year. They've only lost five times this year. But. Even with the analytics not liking Providence, I still kind of like them in this game. They have got a bunch of old dudes on their team. They do not go down without a fight. I love basketball teams that are insanely experienced and and that have those junkyard dogs that we've been talking about, like with Houston. That's kind of what we got here. I I think Providence can win the game outright, and so I will certainly take the seven and a half. and uh, And I'm going to go with the over uh, over one forty one and a half on this. I, I think we're going to see a lot of buckets here. Well, I'm going to take the the seven and a half, but I'm going to take Providence because that's my kind of team, right? Listen, listen, you you see my face? It's my face is posted up on the screen. You don't get a face like that without being lucky, all right? <laughs> listen, you just born lucky, and and I I don't I don't punish people for that, 
listen, this is this is the kind of thing. They're tough. And and it, here's the thing. It's a bet against Kansas. I don't like their ass. I'm never going to. There's nothing the Jayhawks can ever do to make me find them appealing at all. And and so this is just a, I, I, I am going to wish for misery for them and all of their ills. Yeah, I could uh, I could totally understand that. Which, by the way, looking at this lineup, I mean, could could CBS and Turner have scripted this any better other than to include Kentucky? I mean, you've got the one the one Cinderella, but other than that, you've got Purdue, you got Kansas, you got UCLA, North Carolina, you've got Duke on the other side, you got Gonzaga, you got oh, I'm a, Michigan. I'm gonna bet there's some people. At, I'm gonna bet there's some people at CBS that that the last game on this docket. Uh, no, no offense to the good people of Iowa State. And and Miami, they could care less about that. Matchup. Well, of course, like, that game, that game, nobody will be watching. That would is would those, anybody? Wow. Would anybody have cared if it was Wisconsin and Auburn, though? Uh, yeah, you would. You would get the South in there. See, Miami's yeah. not South. True. So, so I disagree with that. You get a huge section of the South. That's a valid Miami, point. Miami, you're not getting that, and 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 Iowa, I would say you're not getting that. The state of Iowa. Uh, you, you got a point. You got a point. We got two more games. Let's go ahead and knock this out. North Carolina against UCLA. UCLA is a two and a half point favorite. Total again one forty one and a half. Uh, look, the way that North Carolina has been playing for the last like three weeks, four weeks since they, the Duke game yeah, was since before that, really. Uh, since they lost to Pittsburgh, they are a top five team in the country analytically. Like they are unbelievable. Wow, they found I didn't it. Realize they analyzed oh yeah, they <laughs> turned. <laughs> They turned it on. Uh, and without, uh, you know, UCLA, looks like Jaime Jaquez might be playing, but he's had ankle injuries all year. Who knows how effective he's going to be. Uh, Mick Cronin came out and said that today. He's like, yeah, he's going to push through it. He's going to try and go, but we don't know what he's going to be like on the floor. So that could be uh, a pretty big issue. I, I'm i going to go to North Carolina. UCLA is my pick in my bracket on this. But I'm I'm going to take North Carolina plus the two and a half and hope that it's just a, you know, last second kind of game. I mean, North Carolina already went to overtime once against Baylor. I I think this one could be very similar to that. Uh, and the one forty one and a half, like my numbers have this going kind of well over that. I'm I'm a little shocked that uh that that's what it is. But you know, I'll uh I'll take it. I mean, my numbers have this closer to uh like a a one forty five spread. Or for what one forty five total, so I'm I'm gonna go over. But uh, but what are your thoughts on North Carolina and UCLA? Uh, this is the hardest game for me to pick out of all of the whole the whole list. Um, it's one of the closest spreads, you know, out, outside of a few of those. Or, you know, the Duke game earlier. Um, I think I'm gonna go with you. I think I'm gonna go with Tar Heels. Uh, I've probably changed my mind every time I've thought about this or been asked about this thing. Um, you know, since since Sunday, and uh, as of right now, I'm going to lean towards the Tar Heels. Hey, it makes sense. Hey, think about this. Uh, think about all the different coaches that have come in first or second year. It kind of started to catch fire in February, somewhere around there, and and ended up making you know a deep tournament run. Right? We've we've seen this before. I mean, Kevin Ollie did it at, at UConn. We've seen these guys have this happen. Uh, it would not shock me. It's not like North Carolina hadn't had talent. They just hadn't been able to piece it all together. So, and now we know UCLA has had talent, but they've just kind of they've just kind of gone through the season. Maybe now that it's tournament time, I think this is going to be a fun, fun matchup. Finally, we'll get to the last one: Iowa State and Miami. Miami, a one and a half point, fa- or sorry, two and a half point favorite. Excuse me. Uh, the total is one thirty three on this. I think Miami's got too many guards. I think they are just way better than Iowa State. Iowa State, I think, kind of got lucky to be here, and I know that teams hate to hear that. But uh, Wisconsin's point guard went out in the first, like, 10 minutes of the game. Uh, you didn't have a great game from Johnny Davis. I don't, I don't think he was actually 100% healthy in that game. I, I just I don't think Iowa State is that good. They haven't played that well so far this year. I, I do think Miami has kind of turned this thing on. I like Miami a lot at minus two and a half here. Uh, my numbers don't necessarily say that, but that's the way that I'm going to go. And um, I'm going to take the under uh, 133. Like, I think it's going to be low scoring because I don't think Iowa State can score. That's uh, that's just the, the feel that I've got on this. This could be, you know, a, a 70 to, you know, 55 kind of game. That's that's what I'm looking for. I think Miami kind of blows them out. What do you think? 
Well, if the last game was the game that I didn't care or, or didn't have a feeling for um, and, and really have an answer for, this is the game I just do not care about. Um, I, I kind of going into the tournament. Now, I could be dead wrong about this Miami team. I kind of went into the tournament thinking neither one of these teams were very good. I had them both getting beat game one. Okay, I cannot like, believe you know, I just, that you don't care about this game. TJ Otzelberger against Jim Laranega? I mean, what are we talking about? This is a this um, is a coaching matchup for generations, my friend. This that, they, people will look fine. back on. I, 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 that's fine. I don't. I just, I'm trying hard to sell. Do, it. Nah, it's okay. It's okay. I actually, I actually really like Coach Jim Laranega a lot. I, it's just that the players on this team just don't matter to me at all. Like they just, you know, I, I haven't. I haven't fallen in love with it. Now, I don't watch a lot of college basketball. Okay? This is not my sport. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love sense. the tournament. I get in when the conference tournament starts, and nobody caught my eye with either of these teams during the conference run. Nobody's caught my eye since. I, I, you know, it just is what it is. I, I'll take – I mean, I guess I'd take the point just, just because I don't care, and I don't think either of these teams are really good. I don't think either of these teams should have made it a 6 sweet 16. They did. Congratulations to them. Whoever's getting a head start, I'll take that. That makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, guy to watch out for Miami, Charlie Moore. He's on like his sixth team in eight seasons. I mean, it's it's bananas how far. I, I think he started at TCU with Jamie Dixon and then went to California. And then I think he went somewhere else for a little bit, maybe Kansas or something like that. And now he's ended up at Miami. I mean, he has been all over the place. Like, it is absurd, but he is a grizzled veteran guard, and uh, and he's been really good. He's been really good for Miami uh, after about like mid-December. So keep an eye on him. That'll be the one to watch. All right, that'll do it for Sweet 16 picks and whatnot. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.